median nerve, anatomy, pain, and block. We start with anatomy as usual. This is, this is an important overview of the nerve course to show you how it travel mostly in the medial side of the arm and then in the closer to the midline and then almost midline in the forearm. So the median nerve, as you see here, it formed or originate from the lateral and medial cords. As you see here, they, they meet to form the median nerve from the pericle plexus. And here I highlighted for you the nerve just to give you an overview where is the nerve in the medial compartment and when it reaches the elbow how it travels anterior to the medial epicondyle. So in the arm it passes vertically downward lateral or and with the brachial artery. So the brachial artery is a very important landmark for the median nerve. The median nerve in the arm, it crosses the brachial artery, as you see uh, here. Then it becomes anterior to the artery and medial to the artery, just above the elbow. At this level, it should be between the biceps brachii and the brachialis. So here, um, this is just the, the median nerve with the brachial artery. And as you see, they were running together. And then the median nerve start to go above the brachial artery and medial. And here you can appreciate the, the biceps brachii and the brachialis. So at this level, the nerve between these two muscles. This is a cross section here. Again, it show you the nerve with the vessels. So the nerve close to the brachial artery and vein. And you see here the uh, biceps brachialis and more lateral, the uh, brachialis, the brachialis. And as we slightly go down, this is lower arm just above the elbow. Again, do you see the median nerve and the brachial artery and in the muscle layer between the biceps, brachii, and the brachialis. So here, um, looking at the cubital fossa, you see the median nerve medial to the brachial artery. Speaking of the cubital fossa, so these are the boundaries, which I'm not going to go in on depth. But what's important for me to notice that what's inside the brachial, uh, sorry, the cubital fossa. So starting from medial, you have the median nerve, followed by the brachial artery, followed by the biceps tendon, and followed by the radial nerve, its two branches, the superficial and the deep. But notice here the uh, basilic, the basilic vein, it's the most medial structure. However, it's outside the cubital fossa. So when you put your ultrasound there, I will show you the basilic being the most medial structure. So this is another view here. As the nerve started to pass in the forearm, it actually go between the two head of the pronator teres at this area here. And it travel eventually between the flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus. Remember, profundus mean deep. So at this level, you see part of the uh, pronator teres, the brachialis um, lateral, and you just see the biceps tendon superficial, and here is the 
median nerve and brachial artery again. So going further down, this is the forearm. Again, this is the, the two head of the pronator teres. And then you see the, the, the flexor digitorum superficialis and underneath that, the flexor digitorum profundus, and you see how the nerve just goes straight down. Uh, this is um, another forearm anatomy uh, uh, picture, just to show you where is the median nerve uh, uh, in relation to the ulnar nerve and the radial nerve. So here, an, uh, a cross section at the mid forearm, uh, you see the median nerve here, underneath the flexor digitorum superficialis, and you see the flexor digitorum profundus, again profundus mean uh, uh, deep. So in the posterior uh, compartment you have the radial nerve, and in the, uh, and here you see the, the ulnar Ulnar, uh, sorry, the radial nerve uh, in the radial compartment and the posterior interosseus, which is the deep branch of the radial nerve. The ulnar nerve is, is right there. So here, uh, going farther down in the distal uh, forearm, you see the nerve become very superficial here uh, until it enter the carpal tunnel. So when we look at the carpal tunnel here, actually this is more uh, you see at this level, but here is more clear. So the carpal tunnel, so that's the median nerve here, and that's the ulnar nerve, so that's the uh, medial side. And you see this is the flexor uh, retinaculum. So when, when you hear about the carpal tunnel syndrome, it's nothing but compression of the median nerve between the flexor retinaculum and the flexor tendons. And the flexor tendons here we have four flexor digitorum superficialis. Remember that muscle I showed you? And flexor digitorum profundus. Remember the nerve was traveling between these two muscles, and these are the, ten the tendons here. So now the nerve is superficial to the tendons and underneath the flexor retinaculum. And notice the ulnar nerve outside the carpal tunnel, the radial nerve outside the carpal tunnel. So what are the medial, the median nerve branches? Um, very much the median nerve travel all the way to the elbow before it starts to give uh, branches. Just a, a small branch here to the brachial artery at the arm, but ve very much it's a straight nerve here. So if you are thinking to to block the nerve or um, or uh, put a peripheral nerve stimulator for diseases from the elbow down, then literally you can go anywhere here where the anatomy allow you. And then at the forearm, you see it give a bunch of um, uh, muscular uh, branches and you have the anterior interosseous branch just uh, uh, mirror imaging the posterior interosseous branch, which is from the radial nerve, if you remember from that lecture. And then you have the palmar cutaneous here, and here I will show you uh, more uh, branches. So here again, uh, another uh, picture from another uh, reference, it show you uh, where is these branches in relation to, to each muscle. So it's more advanced, so I'm just going to keep it here for you. So once it reach the, the carpal tunnel, then at that level, it gives you the, palm, the palmar branch, which is, which is uh, really superficial, as you see here. And then it gives you digital nerves and recurrent branch, as you see here. Um, so how median nerve pain or neuralgia uh, present? So just to refresh your memory, the, the median nerve is motor for all muscles of the anterior compartment of the forearm, 
except the flexor curvi alnaris and medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus, and the three thinner muscles of the thumb and two lateral uh, uh, lumbarical muscles. Uh, sensory, it's over the lateral aspect of the palm, it, so it's, it's mainly a palm sensation, and a little bit on the uh, um, in the uh, in the other aspect, um, just at the tip and the fingernail, as you see, uh, for the first uh, three and a half uh, fingers. So, how this nerve present, or uh, if if it's injured or if if it's blocked? So, obviously, you're gonna lose the the wrist flexion. That's if you get the nerve injured anywhere from the axilla all the way down uh, up to the to the to the elbow. So injury at the elbow, you lose all the you know the flexors innervation, and of course you're gonna lose sensation in the lateral aspect of the palmar palmar surface as I showed you. And here, if you have a chronic uh, injury you can have the, the classic abbey uh, uh, hand uh, like this here and if you have um, injury or block at the uh, at the wrist then uh, you wouldn't have uh, that weakness in the wrist flexors but you will lose the opposition uh, movement of the of the thumb as you see in this illustration so this is a quick review for these uh, signs that you can examine different uh, uh, peripheral nerves so the peace sign for the ulnar nerve the thumb up sign for the radial nerve always remember the thumb with the radial and then you have the power to people the median nerve when I will show you a better image in a second and the OK sign also with the median nerve. So this is the OK sign, and it's a sign that examine the anterior interosseous nerve weakness. So you can also examine the opposition of the thumb. And here, the power sign, or the uh, the name of the scientist to also describe this, and you see uh, these two fingers they are not closing all the way down um, so what can cause median nerve injury or neuropathy again I'm dividing it based on the level of the injury so in the arm specifically at the axilla it can be any kind of trauma or pressure pulses sometimes from crutches uh, supracondylar uh, spur and ligament uh, uh, strethers a supracondylar fracture and they are here at the antecubital fossa you have the pronator syndrome and sometimes the elbow arthroplasty and arthroscopy can injure the nerve and at the forearm you get uh, the radial fracture or uh, radial surgery um, you get the carpal tunnel syndrome also you can get it injured from the surgery to the carpal tunnel syndrome like endoscopic or open and also you can get it injured not only at the forearm even at the anticubital fossa from cannulation from cannulation to vessels so the supracondylar spur as you see here um, so this is a small spur this is a larger spur it's and it's usually um, about five centimeter proximal to the medial epicondyle and here at this level you get the ligament of uh, struthers which is again an, an anomaly attached and goes all the way down to the medial epicondyle so in this corner here you get the median nerve uh, entrapped uh, and of course you're gonna see the weakness in the uh, flexor, uh, rest flexors, as I showed you in the previous slide. The pronator syndrome uh, is a little bit more common, but remember the most common entrapment for the median nerve is the carpal tunnel. So here you get the nerve 
compressed uh, between the uh, uh, two head of the inside the pronator teres muscle. So if you look here at the pronator teres, you have the superficial and the deep head, or the radial, the radial that inserts in the radial bone, and the deep head, which is the ulnar head. So in this, the, the nerve run, and it can be uh, compressed at uh, this level. Here also, they reflected the pronator teres for you. So the patient usually present with pain and paresthesia in the forearm. There is tenderness. There is a maybe a positive uh, tenor sign and weakness uh, of the muscles, uh, but there is no sensory deficit usually. Um, you can test it there by doing, by asking the patient to uh, pronate from full supination, and you resist that. So that's called pronator syndrome uh, test. Also, you can uh, test it by uh, resisting the flexion of the middle uh, finger where you have the flexor insert there. So if you think about it, this is literally the opposite of the supinator syndrome, which I discussed on the radial uh, nerve uh, lecture. And then we have the carpal tunnel syndrome, which is again, it's a compression of the nerve between the flexor retina column and the flexor tendons. Remember the four tendons of the superficialis and the four tendons of the profundus. So interestingly here, if you look at the causes of this compression, it's a very long list. It's a very long list. This is why it's, uh, it's, a, it's the most common uh, um, uh, neuropathy of the median nerve. So you get uh, diabetes, alcohol, vitamin deficiencies, etc., stress, etc. Fluid uh, shift like uh, pregnancy, hypothyroidism, obesity, renal failure, and repetitive uh, stress, uh, especially with uh, people who do uh, a lot of vibration work, uh, and etc. So it's a very common. And the way you test for this, you have three tests. You have the thumb abduction test, which is important because it isolates the strength of the abductor pollicis brevius muscle innervated only by the median nerve. So it's an important uh, uh, test, as you see here. And then you have the Fallon test, which is, as you see here, you ask the patient to hold both wrists in fully palmar flex position with the dorsal surface pressing together for one minute and that will recreate the symptoms or increase the pain and, 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 and numbness. And then we have the tunnel sign which is striking uh, the wrist just uh, above the flexor retinaculum and that usually uh, recreate the pain or the zapping pain or increase the, the pain on the distribution of the median nerve. So how we block the median nerve, um, again, I'm going to walk you through this from the axilla all the way down to the carpal tunnel. So starting on the axilla, as you see, this is the, the biceps muscle. This is the triceps muscle. This is the humerus here. And our friend here, the axillary artery. So the median nerve is superior, superior and anterior to the axillary nerve, and, and, and these are the other nerves. Um, this is almost in 95% the case. You see the median nerve at 11 o'clock in relation to the axillary artery in that specific position and ultrasound orientation. However, in about 5%, you can get the median nerve um, uh, together with the musculocutaneous nerve, just to keep that in mind. And then you start to scan down in the arm. So this is close to the axilla, just the upper humerus. And here you start to see the brachial artery. Remember your brachial artery is the friend when you are looking for the median nerve. And then uh, scanning down here, we're getting uh, close to the, this is the, the distal, 
uh, humorous. So here you see again the median nerve, this guy here, with the brachial artery and, and, and the vader close to each other. And you see the nerve between the, the biceps brachii here and the brachialis uh, here at this level. And then uh, moving uh, farther down, this is at the uh, cubital fossa. So here, remember, when I showed you the content of the cubital fossa, now the basilic vein is the most medial structure, but again, it's outside the, uh, the, the fossa. Then you get the, you get the median nerve and you get the brachial artery right there, start to separate a little bit. And then uh, moving farther uh, down, you still add the uh, cubital fossa here. Now you see the end of the, uh, the beginning, sorry, of the brachial radialis. And this is just passing the fossa. And you see the pronator terrace here. And the brachialis, this is the end of the brachialis because it's coming from the humerus, remember? So here the brachial artery and next to it the... Um, Sorry, next to it here, the, the median uh, nerve. Uh, scanning farther down, now you have to remember these two muscles, these two muscles, the flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus. So the nerve run just between them. This is more medial, so this will be the radial uh, nerve here. Uh, going farther down uh, between the two muscles, and uh, keep going down. Um, now it gets uh, more uh, superficial. We are about to enter the wrist or the carpal tunnel. So in the carpal tunnel, as you see, this is the uh, this is the superficial uh, tendon, right? Uh, the superficial uh, digitorum super uh, uh, sorry the flexor digitorum superficialis, and this is the flexor digitorum profundus tendons and here you have the flexor pollicis longus and always the nerve uh, superficial as you see here. So here uh, I just added this because it's important when you are doing a carpal tunnel injection or if you are uh, examining to see if there is a compression to the nerve it's it's extremely important to ask the patient to to do this movement, open and close the the, the palm because you see the nerve uh, moving, and also you see the nerve dimension change. So I will leave you with this study. Basically, they did some measurement, and they show you here that's the normal diameter of the nerve. This is some mild uh, compression, and and this is uh, severe. So the nerve gets more swollen and and bigger and bigger. Um, speaking of diameters, I highly recommend that you try to get this habit. Train your eyes to look at the diameter of the nerves. The more you do this, the more you're going to get experience with that. But uh, this is a, also a nice study here, summarized to you, a pooled analysis from multiple studies, the normal diameter of the median nerve all the way from uh, the mid-arm to the carpal uh, uh, tunnel, and that can uh, let you know if you if you are dealing with an angry nerve like neuropathy or compression, uh, etc. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this. Uh,